No, because uh, it would automatically, unless you guys specify otherwise, it's a class A violation. Right. And we don't specify otherwise, so it is a class A. However, it might be prudent to either specify or at least make sure it's understood that they, that for a traditional violation, it will be a 20% increase. If we, yeah. don't, if we don't specify... It's automatically a plus. Could someone make the uh, case that it could have been less? Because we didn't specify. Yeah, it could. Because what does that language actually say? An amount equal to the greater of 20% of the maximum fine. I, I don't agree with you, but. So or the minimum fine prescribed by statute for the violation. So it says, or the minimum fine. I think we could just put, they're going to be fined the maximum allowed by law. And, there, and, and then that way we could use whatever law we want. Plus 20% for each additional fine. Mm -hmm. And then that way we're not curling ourselves on it. Yeah. Okay. And if we need to, after a year or two, we need to change that, we can always change it. It's a good way to start up. I thought we were going to lock it in for five years. Is it going to be by parade? <laughs> yeah, is there is there is there an for this? <laughs> but I, I do, you know, before we shut down for lunch, we do need to figure out what we need to do on our own ordinance to change that. And so for the end. For the camping thing, for the RV thing, for the storage container thing. I don't mind people having storage containers, yeah. but I think to put a storage container on a place, you got to permit it for one. And and that would, you know, the permit doesn't have to be very expensive. What are you thinking, Arlen? Well, so there's some things that are exempt from the code. Don't we yeah. code. So less than two acres, it's 200 feet or less. Less than a commercial zone, it's 120 feet or less. As a storage structure, not higher than 10 feet maximum height or mean height, I think is the language they use. Um, and then it's 400 feet, square feet or more if you're over two acres. So I mean, you can get into a pretty big storage structure that doesn't even require permits at all. And yeah, but we these structures, I mean these conics contain yeah, but whatever. Our, but, but our our ordinance can be more restricted. Yeah, yeah. We could definitely be more restricted. Yeah. And so on the building side, they you know, these start put windows in or door, so on and so forth. Um, you know, it's not they're not it's not saying they can't be made into a residence. It's just when they start doing that, yes, it needs permitted as what it's gonna be. On the storage side of it, it meets all the requirements of land use, and it wouldn't be a permit. But to say we're going to start, you know, you need a permit for one of those storage containers, that'd be a, that'd be a big change. A lot of yeah. running around checking on the thing because when did it show up? I mean, when did it become effective? Well, that was there before you put your ordinance in place. I mean, there's Thousands, maybe these storage containers. So, out the so what's the better idea? What do we need to do? Well, I, I'm not opposed to the state's, you know, exempt stuff. I mean, 400 is a that's a very large structure. It's hard to, I mean, because that gets really tempting to start turning it into a livable space when you can start charging rent. So, 100, but it's the five, thousand, yeah, the 28 yeah. parcel lots that yeah. you find five of them. I mean, when we're bringing this all back to nuisance and enforcement. You know, once we tackle the really, really bad ones that are out there, and then we're still needing to have job security for folks, then I think maybe we start looking at some of that other stuff to really get down in the weeds. But to me, I mean, we, this position will be extremely busy for years to come. I mean, with all the amount of cleanup, and then we can start getting into that 
other storage structures turn into something else. You'll start seeing them, and you're not going to ignore them. You're, you're going to if they're living in it, deal with them not for case by case for a structure. They still think you have that route to go, just based on the discretion. Yeah, but what so if they say they're not living in it? There's four or five trailers there. On the piece of the if the, but, if they're, but if they're living in it, I think the evidence of them living there would be there. For instance, where is the excrement going? You know, all, all that uh, it starts to factor in. And for that position, I mean, that, you know, for an hourly investigation, I mean, that you're going to have to pay that person anyway, so, so something of that. And I don't, I don't those know, files, those closing the, close the case the takes on there. Takes on there. Uh, and I, I think it should reflect on the abatement side. That's another thing. When we start abating all these RVs, which there's hundreds of abandoned or semi-abandoned, where are we where where are we going to take that to? And I don't I don't know about RVs. I know cars. You know they, they go on VIN numbers. Um, <clears throat> I mean, that's just something that already has a been number. thinking about because there's no way we can afford to, you know, tow a thousand RVs down here and put them somewhere. You know, we have county lots on the north end of the county for the transfer sites. And, you know, We'd have to build fences around the towers. We're going to be in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know? uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure how that. Okay, um, it's noon. Um, we have five more items on the agenda. Um, would everyone like to take a break for lunch or just get through it? Well, I got a quick I'm just saying a shake. I got a quick Let's, Let's get through I'll it. Fast. Okay, Let's, Let's, have, have we discussed, uh, um, you know, stop word words? Oh, I, I, some language in that for you <laughs> in the code enforcement handbook. Okay. Like, I added language saying that you have the right to investigate a property right. and yeah. right of entry. Right, right. And um, said, so, is that you. something that's going to be adopted soon? So that, I hope the, they will the adopt whole that international too. One, we're adopting the whole international book. In the code enforcement handbook. Yeah. Or possibly. And then, so what you've implemented is just. No one on here. Oh. But I mean, so all of your stuff is in that international deal. So we're adopting all of your stuff in that book. Oh, okay. And then, and then, uh, plus the right of entry. And the, and the permitted solar structural. We didn't get there, did we? Well, I gave Kenny, like, an option and I haven't heard back and then I don't know about your process I don't know if you guys have to add, submit that to the state for approval too because it's a new fee I don't know how like, that works we need to circle back and get well the fee, the fee was on there and then it, then it went away from uh -huh. the state level and then they allow the county to adopt it so we're just gonna we just have so to we don't it. even have to submit mm -hmm. this. Okay. we don't have to submit anything because it's the, the structural fees already there it's a it's a, it's a um, it's for the project. That, that, that's a percentage of the project. Right. Yeah. So all, all the county has to do is it just it just adopt that in as a as a permitted part of the building process. Okay. So I can get that on the agenda for as an addition tomorrow and then I can start that hearing process too. Don't mm -hmm. have a bunch of hearings. That would be great. At once and just that works. Yeah, that would get be great before for the solar gets yeah, we're going to probably be adopting some other solar things too. I'm assuming. Yeah, no, I just I got a call on a, a company, so they'll, they'll be entertaining it. What's good? All right. Okay, with that, uh, Melanie, do you have a agreement? Yeah, appreciate the input. Hey, no problem. Thanks, Kate. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. ODOT agreement um, 35172. <laughs> So this is for the next biennium for ODOT. It is for $135,400 to be shared equally or equitably between Intercourt Family Center and the Lake County Senior Citizens Association. 
And our contribution is the uh, fourteen thousand one hundred sixteen. No. So that's it's local match. But that is coming from SDF funds. Oh, okay. uh, we we don't pay anything for transportation. All right. And some of that comes from in kind volunteer hours. Wow. Okay. Okay, so it's all state funds. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have no other questions then. Where do you see the uh, the dollar figures there? Oh, it's uh, right on the front page. Uh, well, there were some, but there was a oh. there was another chart on page eleven. <clears throat> well, the front page talks about two hundred thousand. Yeah, it has the two hundred thousand and then one hundred eighty six, but. You'll see the local match. Sorry. I guess those are the SDF. Maybe I should clarify. Some of these are SDF funds and some are 53 cent federal funds. We're getting 133,404. Maybe I don't have the whole agreement. You have page 11? Oh, yeah. I don't have my desk now. Um, <clears throat> oh, so I don't have the 5310 one. This is um, the 135400 is for uh, STF, and the other amount is for 5310. And there's no match for STF or STIF. Okay. And the STIF is a communal fund. But that local match. It, it adds up to fourteen hundred, but it comes in two different pieces: in the six thousand and then seven thousand six hundred. Mm -hmm. yeah, 14, so if we come, were to uh, fourteen thousand total. So like at one point when I first started, their budget was terrible, um, and we've cleaned that up. But they ran out of SDF funds for match. Mm -hmm. So they were liable for their own match per the agreement. So if it's not on the county's back, we just administer this. So if a, if one of the providers runs out of available match, then it's on them to provide the match. Questions? No. Good. All right. um, CSU uh, contract. So this contract is for the income demographic survey from Portland State University. Um, it kind of just goes over what they're going to do, their what they're responsible. Um, our costs that we've already agreed upon, and then if you guys approve this, they can begin the demographics study for the community development block grants for the water project and the library. Didn't we already agree on this? And this is just a this is just the formal contract. Yeah. Yeah. And if we approve this, do you want me to just go ahead and sign? through the email that they sent to me. That'd be great. Yeah. And then we can just keep this one for the funder. Okay. I think that helps speed that up because we do we do want to get those submitted as soon as possible. That's what I was thinking. I just go ahead and give them their um, Google app signature thing, whatever it is. Any questions? Or any of this? Pretty much exactly what we were all talking about. So the second amendment to this um, OHA agreement for the youth summit. Before it said it was for adult services, adult prevention, and then this agreement just changes it to youth. Serve youth prevention, so there's no fiscal impact, it's just a language change. 
this is the one for FT and school. Yeah. I think July 27th through the 29th or something like that. And then the next um, OHA, OHA agreement is for public health for their metrics. Um, and then, so it is allocating $37,627 for public health pre preparedness, <coughs> public health prep, sorry. Uh, alcohol and drug prevention, is $53,379.38. Um, WIC for July through September is $279. WIC for October through June is $835. Public health immunizations is $2,072. Now, this is the one that we didn't print out. No, um, it's for the biennium. So it kind of just sets up the metrics, and I sent it to you guys. I can print it for you guys if you want to do it. Yeah. I sent it to legal counsel. He says it looks fine. It it's looks... 136 some, some odd pages. Yeah. We might need something from all the proof. Okay. I mean, something from this. Okay. One particular page or something. Okay. Or a summary. <clears throat> I can do that. I looked over in the email. It was pretty big, substantial. But it was pretty brief. Yeah, plot line. It was great. Um, okay, so beyond that, uh, next up, for ordinance. So, so a little bit of history. James worked with the Lake County Fire Defense Board uh, to uh, create the, this burn ordinance for Lake County. Um, this spring, this was a topic in one of our work sessions. Um, I asked to uh, provide comment, or I, I guess I gave comment um, to this, and uh, just finally uh, reconnected with uh, Chief Little and uh, Deputy Sheriff Tag on my uh, questions. Um, we were able to uh, answer everything that I had as far as concerns and whatnot. Um, just there was there were some. Uh, you know, uh, concerns or uh, things that I just wanted to have clarified about declaring uh, declaring burn season, or you know, and then and then declaring uh, having it be shut off, you know, things like that. So, a fire chief, for example, in uh, Silver Lake, cannot uh, change uh, a burn or Burn ordinance in Christmas Valley. And Christmas Valley can't do anything about Summer Lake, or Summer Lake can't do anything about uh, Westside, you know, Thomas Creek Westside, et cetera. They're all kind of their own areas. They recommend to the commissioners about, uh, you know, uh, when to burn and, and when to shut it off. They can, they can enforce it, but they can, they recommend. And we, we, uh, Except we act. Yeah, we act. And uh, burn ban is what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, the burn ban. Yeah. Did you have, did, did Dustin, you kind of iron out those last few things and just kind of get the yeah. situated? So it also got ran before Dustin Gustavuson, just for him, but he agreed with everything that we were looking at. Didn't see any changes. So. Okay, so if somebody does want to burn, they still go through the regular process of yeah. contacting uh, yeah. 911, you know, or the the work number, asking for the the burn permit. Um, so the folks there will get the permit. The no. folks there will talk to the chief, ask, you know, hey, this is when they want to do it. This is the duration. This is the size. This is the location. Pretty good. Chief will reply back. Still has that ability to, to issue a permit. Actually, one of the biggest topics of debate was the fact that there are eight exceptions to the burn ordinance that had all already laid in there. So it, we say burn ban, but is it really a burn ban if we have as many as eight exceptions to it? And so that was, you know, 
one of the big things, you know, we wanted to kind of walk through and make sure that we were being appropriate. And there was some additional language in dark jargon that I just think was superfluous that need to be there. And so Barry caught some really good points and we just, we just made adjustments. Um, people can still have burn barrels. Um, there's allowances for cooking, for, for generating heat. Um, uh, firefighter fire, uh, training activities. Um, and within those exceptions, there's also safety precautions that are outlined, like for instance, burn barrels and everything else. They have a 25 foot clearance. 25 right? foot clearance. And with the, what does it say here? Yeah, screen, um, minimum of one gallon of water uh, or two pound, uh, two and a half pound fire extinguisher and shovel. Uh, there's lots of different things that it just lines out there for guidance and just for people to take precautions and as, as well as a uh, exemption for 4th of July, June 23rd to June 11th, or July 11th. Um, so. I wanted to make sure that the local landowners still have that ability to uh, burn a pile if they needed to burn a pile. There's a process to do that, and they can get an exception if the fire chief deems it uh, safe and acceptable. Yeah. Um, I didn't want uh, something telling you what you can't do, um, and no exception. Yeah, I think that was all on number seven. Any open burning that is permitted with a, with a formal burn pit through the fire authority with jurisdictional fire responsibility and legal authority to issue burn permits. So, thank you. Start the process now tomorrow. Move forward with implementing that as a permanent ordinance for Lake County. All right. Um, anything else to come before us? With that, we will adjourn at. We, oh, hang on. we have a uh, new uh, liaison. Okay. Two of All right. I wasn't, I wasn't saying hands. Forgive me. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. One of them will be on fiber. The other one is on. Uh, Greater Idaho. Greater Idaho. Oh, okay. I'll let you lead me into the Greater Idaho. Okay. So Barry was thinking that maybe we should discuss a time ahead of time when we're going to hold this greater Idaho thing because he's gotten some feedback on people weren't able to attend because we didn't advertise very well, which is true. Yeah. Um, so I didn't know if you guys, or Barry didn't know if you guys wanted to like set up a time for September 22nd where we could start letting people know ahead of time. Should we do it in the afternoon? Or even, uh, Evening meeting. Yeah, like three, four o'clock, five. I'm fine. Five o'clock and then everybody talk to work. Yeah, I'm pretty close. Because the day's the day's pretty much set in stone. Uh, the only reason we got the variance on the last one was because you were good. You were out. I was out. And for lack of a quorum, we can't have a meeting. And we just said we'd just move it to the next Tuesday. And uh, and that was part of the reason why there was just a lack of ability to notify everyone. But the next one will definitely, hopefully, be more people. Okay, so if you guys are good with that, we'll, we'll advertise, we'll have it in the evening. You know, the goal is that we have, we may have to do a little more fact finding ourselves. And, uh, so that we have something to actually talk about instead of uh, only Greater Idaho's information, yeah, or somebody that brings something to the crowd. You know, we need we need something to share with the public. Uh, maybe you know, Idaho, Oregon, things like that. You know, that we, you know, concerns we brought up in the last one, so that it at least is worthy of a uh, good discussion, so that people can see what see what we got. See what we're debating. Yeah. I think having some structure, and I took a lot of notes during that last meeting, and I think having some structure to, to know where we're going. 
really good. So, don't want another free for all. Yes, I don't know. Okay. Any other? So, the last week, uh, this new topic, <clears throat> what we, I met with uh, a company on Friday um, called Elevate Technology Group. And one of the things that Elevate Technology Group uh, has done right now is they're helping the community of McKenzie River. Uh, McKenzie River is one of the communities that got burned over with the fire last uh, Labor Day where they lost a lot of infrastructure and they are helping build a fiber optic plan for the community um, to bring them up to today's technology uh, with, with fiber, high speed internet, the whole mapping of the whole area, and it is a combination of um, fiber and microwave, or you know, a satellite or a dish, mm -hmm. I guess is what we're trying to get at. Um, so they're doing a really good job, and you can uh, look them up and online and, and kind of read about that. They came to us, and this isn't the first time we visited with them, but this was a little more serious conversation. And they would like to um, help develop a plan for Lake Kent. Uh, we've got uh, some fiber here, there, and everywhere, uh, but we don't have uh, fiber and uh, dish capabilities in a good part of Lake Kent. And this, with the potential of Lake County receiving funding uh, for fiber to help uh, rural Oregon with emphasis on K through 12 students and bringing uh, high speed internet into the homes, um, we need a plan. Um, otherwise, we're we're going to have a hodgepodge of everything, and we're never going to be in front of it as far as uh, requesting dollars, um, you know. And so, if we have a grand plan for Lake County, uh, this will help us be more competitive for future funding for grants and will give us a plan that will make us uh, stronger, I guess, as a county. This also could very well change how Lake County uh, looks in the future. Uh, there's a lot of people that uh, love Lake County, would love to move back to Lakeview or, or Paisley or, you know, their hometown where they graduated from or grew up in. But we don't have high speed internet and it doesn't support the business that they work for. And uh, this would be a game changer in that respect. Um, Elevate has uh, offered to help us um, come up with that master plan, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And um, they are well respected. Um, and uh, but one of our concerns is that when we do get money and we have um, smaller groups that want to do this, this, and this, that we could get over in. Yeah. Or duplicated. Or duplicated or miss areas that we intended to have done and we're still out um, in those rural spots within the county. So I guess. Uh, one of the uh, recommendations is, you know, one of the things that we need to consider is we do have ARPA money, and uh, one of the emphasis items in ARPA was uh, broadband for uh, K through 12 in rural Oregon, that we get these areas up to speed and have that provide that service for them. And so this does uh, allow us to use our dollars potentially um, for a company like this to help develop that master plan. They have also agreed to uh, stick through it throughout the life as until it's all completely built and kind of help maintain it. Um, and there's also some discussion about whether the county could actually own uh, some of the infrastructure to where it would pay out to the county in, in increments of who knows what at this point. 
not looking to get rich off of it, but at least we have control of it. Melanie, what did I miss? Anything? You did a great job. Okay. So uh, we know we have time before we have to make a decision on ARPA. We're kind of waiting to hear from the state whether we're going to get funded here by the end of June. As far as uh, other dollars um, that are um, coming to us through, uh, what's that funding called? Uh, infrastructure fund. The infrastructure, yeah, like investment. Uh, investment, investment. Asset. Yeah. yeah. So we're waiting to hear what we're going to get, whether we're getting money from fiber, whether it's railroad, whether it's et cetera, et cetera. So. Uh, one more thing um, LCRI offered to help administer our broadband if we need it. I don't know if you do or don't, but it's also something for you guys to. Which uh, would give them a shot in the arm. Uh, they are 501c3 and uh, would give them some purpose there to help the county uh, as far as that resource initiative. And, you know, in a different way than they've gone in the past instead of natural resources would be on the fire side. It was definitely helpful having SCOED administer some of our CRF funding for the business. We could have done it at the top. Right. So, you know, you guys might want to consider taking LCRI up on their offer. Um, it's not necessary, but it could be very useful. So when we have that July meeting, um, I think our first July work session, mm -hmm. this probably could be in the topic list um, of something that we should consider. Uh, Approving or adopting, and, and how to incorporate or not incorporate with LCRI. Well, I mean, just what I caught in the meeting, I apologize, I couldn't stay through the whole thing, but for one, it shows us a true needs analysis. Because, you know, me being virtually illiterate when it comes to those things. I have no clue what the true needs are in that aspect. Um, and so, and we don't have a fiber master plan at all. And I think that's one area that we need to get up and go on. Because uh, the more I'm in economic develop development, the more I see this is like the main thing we have to have to make things work. Right. And, uh, yeah. So I'm excited about it. I'm looking forward to doing something. And it's, and it's also um, as simple as we know Zao is trying to get approval to run, you know, the big fiber, basically all the way through Oregon to Reno. And we need a, a hub or an outlet here in Lakeview uh, where we can, you know, have a uh, inlet to Zayo's fiber lines there where we can attract other businesses and things like that. So are we gaining any traction on that from them? Or? Well, I think this is again where a company like Elevate can help us with that and have, have those. Uh, we, we can talk to Zayo, so, certainly ourselves. Yeah. But. but so just for me to try to understand, when we go back to us owning some of the infrastructure, our infrastructure would come from that big fiber ice sales out. Mm -hmm. and I so, can't say yes or no to well, that. Well, I mean, well, yeah, that's, if, if we were on, I think if it's, if it's a hit. Yeah, like I mean, farm. what's that? Like an arm off of it or like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, like, so, it's like a the way Zayo guys mm -hmm. described it to us. It's like an off ramp of highway. It's a yeah. major highway. It's an off ramp, and so. They're going to have one south of town, they're going to have one up here at Paisley. And so, basically, when I spoke to them, the question was whether or not we could get one closer to Lakeview and closer to the areas that, that you know where the population is. But if they're, the off ramp is going to be south of town, guys like this other group, you know, that we're working with, and is you know, we need to have a way to get it here. Yeah, yeah, it's just like our the natural gas line is owned by Red Rock to Red Rock and then it's owned by us after that. Or would be. Uh, you know, yeah. And so and that's what we would do. 
virtually in this case. It would be a, it'd be a shame if there wasn't an off ramp mm -hmm. in our communities yeah, in the county. Yeah. And I don't know if we can get all, but we at least need to make that pitch and try to have that done for us. So it can help us economically in the future. I think all of that would be objective too. Like they just want to help Lake County connect, you know, like they don't have like a north versus south mentality. They want to just equitably help right. us. Um, I think if anything, they'd probably like the north more, but, but, but. And it takes maybe, you know, obviously we're the decision makers, but it helps give us uh, recommendations to us um, how to build this, how to do it right. And what, what is duplication, what is not. Where we go next, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And, and obviously, if you have this plan in place, then like I said, you automatically move up to the next level of funding uh, where there's a bigger pot of money and less competition. Yeah, without a fiber master plan, we're at the bottom of the barrel, really. We're just another player. It puts us in that, in that category of you know, having nearly shovel ready projects and a vision. And we know that we need a third party. You know, uh, group either it's these guys or someone else, no matter what. But these guys, if they build the plan, I mean, that's that's what we need. But we need a third party in order to do that handshake between the fiber on the north end, between LSN and Hunter and whoever else is down here. But if we own the fiber, then we wouldn't have to worry about those other players. So do you guys feel comfortable with me asking them to get together like a proposal for a flow for a master plan? Mm -hmm. yep. And bring up the next mm -hmm. meeting. Yep. If they can if they have the time, that'd be great. Um, Here. Yeah. Whenever they get that proposal done, I mean I don't really want to be the dead horse and keep bringing them back, but it would be nice if they would at least have a spokesman. Years. Or they can do it on the yeah, there you go. Okay. So I have one other update. Sure. Um, a few weeks ago, three weeks or better ago, in Leba with the uh, state, you know, regional solutions, uh, sent out an email talking about a raise grant. Uh, raise grant is a uh, transportation grant. Uh, it's very uh, limited in the amount of people that uh, are successful in getting a raise grant. Uh, we're talking very low, like 1% of the applicants. But uh, we have been encouraged by ODOT and by Business Oregon to put in an application for the railroad. Uh, and it would encompass the rest of the proposal of upgrades that the Chrissy grant does not cover. So this would be to the tune of about $16 million. Um, the raise grant has a minimum of $1 million award and a maximum of $25 million. Each state cannot exceed $25 million. And so we would be, you know, trying to figure out what's going on in the rest of the state. Obviously, you can't get the grant if you don't apply. Yeah, uh, I did. I've been in contact with Sharon Lighty, um, uh, the lady who's helping us with grant writing, who we have on contract, and she is working on it. Okay. Uh, we've also, uh, you know, talked with. Uh, Ann Cramerine helped us uh, have the discussions with her so we can get her off on the right foot because Ann was such an integral part of the Chris grant. Right. And uh, so we'll see where it takes us. But I just wanted to let you guys know that we'll be probably putting in an application for further funding for the railroad. And is there a match on that one, Larry? It is not asked for a match, but. Uh, it, it does talk about an 80-20 type of thing, um, but it wasn't specific on the match. Did not specify you had to have a match. Okay. And what was the time frame on that? That was my question. 
So you have to have a letter in uh, by Friday, this Friday, <laughs> but your actual application is due the following Friday. Okay, so is the letter in, do we have the insurance sent in a letter? Is uh, yes, no. It's, so you just had the conversation yesterday. So, so maybe if we put a letter together, we can have it as an, as an addition on tomorrow's. No, she won't get the letter done until Friday. She, I think she just needs to send, submit the letter of intent. Right? Letter of intent. So it's nothing you guys need to take action on. Yeah, we don't have to. Sure. sure. Okay, sure. It just takes care of it. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Letter of intent that we will be applying and then the following. It's either due the June 30th or the 24th. I can't remember when it's due. That's uh, as long as she gets it in yeah. on time. Um, okay. So I want you guys to be aware of that. Oh, yes. Alrighty. Anything left? I have to use tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're, <laughs> You're waiting. All right. With that, um, you know, I, I don't really have too many updates on AOC. AOC was really good. Mark and I went and just got back. Uh, it was a really good discussion with everyone at AOC. AOC is going to be buying a building. Uh, across the street from the current AOC building. So, um, where CIS is currently. Which town? In Salem. Salem. Yep. They, they were restricted during COVID by the landowner where they couldn't meet in person and have meetings there. And so, this will make it where we can, we, the commission, the counties have control over. Is this going to raise our rates? <laughs> no, sure. Um, so, but uh, they're, it should actually save money. And the, the executive board met last night. Um, they went into executive session, came out, and made the decision to buy the building. And so it was, it was good discussion, though. And uh, Meg Houston and I waited outside till we heard till everyone came out. That told us what kind of happened. Um, other than that, we're looking forward to uh, legislative um, uh, meeting at our legislative meeting in uh, August up at Hermiston, and then we have another AOC day in Tillamook County in September. So, other than that, I have nothing else. Um, We'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting at 12.40. I want to go grab some lunch. Sorry.